Hi, this is Judy Rodman, your vocal coach. For all things vocal today, I want to talk about how imagination runs your voice. Do you remember when making up stories, finger painting, doing abstract art, playing with your imaginary friends was a thing for you? If you don't, ask a family member who knew you well as a child, and I bet they can remind you. Human beings all develop to some degree the ability to imagine. Creative imagination fuels intention and expectation. Did you know your voice largely runs on this? Let's talk about some ways your imagination directs your voice and it starts with your focused intention. Let's think about premeditating a conversation. A bit like a well-executed crime, a conversation goes better when you brainstorm before you act. Even if it's an almost unconscious split-second flash in a casual conversation, thinking before you speak helps you fully enter the scene and fully intend the reaction you want. Okay, fully entering a scene. I don't know anyone who doesn't feel dissed when listening to somebody who's talking or singing while distracted. When you aren't fully present, your voice will communicate that fact. You are not fully present with the person that you're talking to. Make use of your senses to read the room, to choose your one heart focus. Who are you talking to? What do you want that heart to understand? Okay, now let's talk about fully claiming the reaction that you want. Unlike most other moral situations, the Machiavelli principle, which is the ends justifies the means, actually works here. If you were successful at making your listener respond a certain way, what would their body and facial language look like? That's your end goal. Now, do what it takes to get that result. Okay, now choose your sound. Guided by your premeditated intention, you can imagine how you want your voice to sound to get that result. Don't worry, in practicality, these intention choices can be quite short, just split second, but it's just important to know that they should take place. First, choose the type of sentence you want to use. Is it a question? Is it an exclamation? Or is it a statement? Second, Intend the length of line that you want to use. This tells your automatic nervous system how much air to take in and how much air to use. Good vocal training, of course, makes that process a lot more efficient. Now choose the tone color, the volume, the inflection, and the clarity of articulation that you want to use to deliver your words to get that intention. Again, with all good training, the pool of possibilities to choose from is going to be a lot bigger. Now intend the pitch you want to use. For speakers, this means the area of your vocal range that you want to center your voice in. If you're doing some childlike things uh, or talking about toys, maybe doing a commercial for toys, you might want your pitch center to be a little higher. If you want to talk about a sultry thing or a relaxing thing, you might want your pitch center to be a little lower. And you'll choose how your pitch moves through your speaking melody line, kind of the shape of the curves. For singers, of course, it's going to mean the exact pitch of your intended notes. If you fully intend to hit those notes, you'll actually aim at them and be much more likely to hit them. There's where that intention is so powerful. And here's another way imagination directs your voice. When you want to imagine you're someone else. Sometimes we actually want to match someone else's voice. A terrific way to do this is to mime while listening to that voice. That way your imagination starts directing your vocal apparatus, breath, rhythm, and articulation to match what you're hearing before you even try it. We learn the intricacies of other voices much quicker by imagining the sound before sounding our own voice. Here are some very valid reasons for mimicking another voice. First, you want to learn a new style. Next, you want to learn a new language. Next, you might want to do a sound alike 
sounding just like another lead singer, say for fun at a karaoke event or for commercial purposes when your client wants a specific kind of voice. Another reason? You want to sing tight harmony with another lead singer as their background singer for stage or studio. This may entail really changing your vocal tone and inflections to match another one perfectly. Another reason, you want to mimic your vocal coach to learn a new singing technique. A good coach is going to be careful to help you find your own voice for your own reasons in the technique that you're learning this way. And another reason, you want to mimic your dialect coach to change your accent. Here's the bottom line. Human vocal sounds, speaking and singing, are amazingly intricate in variety. Like all creatures' voices, the human voice exists for a reason. Even when we talk to ourselves, we're telling ourselves something. If you've been feeling invisible and you want to express your voice and its messages more successfully, try being more present in the moment, more intentional with your messages, and more creative and powerful using your imagination.